Good evening, and welcome to our Good Friday service of worship. My name is Reverend Jessica Brenler nalty and I serve here at the United Methodist Church of Red Bank, where we are inviting and inclusive of all, growing together in our faith, knowledge, and love of God. We're so glad that you have joined us for worship on this holy evening. We invite you to take advantage of the clickable links which are provided for you. You'll see a link for our bulletin, our online giving option, as well as our connection card, which lets you uh, share that you're attending with us tonight and share any prayer requests you have with us. Before we immerse ourselves into our Good Friday service, I want to make sure to invite you to our Easter morning celebrations. We are having an in-person service. It's a sunrise service at 6 a.m. on Seabright Beach. It's in collaboration with some other local Methodist churches in the area. Again, Seabright Public Beach at 6 a.m. And then at 10 a.m., we'll have our online worship of celebrating Easter. And that's at 10. You can find it through our church website or YouTube page. We hope that you join us for that celebration and invite others to share in this Easter joy together. But before we get to Easter, we have to go through the shadowy darkness of this Good Friday evening. So let us come together now in prayer as we prepare to hear again the story of the final hours of Christ's life. I invite you to join me in this responsive call to worship I'll lead on the non-bolded texts and invite everyone to join together on the bolded texts. With heavy hearts, we come to worship on this Holy Friday. Reluctantly, we hear the story of Jesus' suffering. Bleakly, we follow Jesus to the cross. Humbly, we acknowledge our part in his passion. Deeply, we yearn to understand the depths of his sacrifice. Solemnly, we gather this day to pray and worship together, giving thanks to our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us sing together our opening hymn, Ah, Holy Jesus. Whoa. 
was the incarnation, thy mortal sorrow, and thy life's oblation, thy death of anguish, and thy Let us now join together in the centering prayer. God of light, God of shadow, in our time together today, keep us aware of your presence in the darkness. Help us to see meaning in this terrible story and keep the fire of hope alive in our hearts. Give us the courage to acknowledge the light and the shadow within us and the world around us, and to surround them all with the transforming power of your love. Amen. Amen. Good Friday by George Stewart. That Friday oh so long ago, why do we call it good? It tells a wretched tale of woe, of thorns and cross of wood. By all his friends left desolate, they could not stand the strain. They left him at the hellish gate of suffering and of pain. That saddest and that darkest day when love was put to death, when evil seemed to have its way to slaughter life and breath. Yet woven in those tragic tales is courage, strength, and grace. He prayed for those who drove the nails. He promised God's embrace. That Friday, oh so long ago, we watch God's love explode. Inspired now, I dare to show, my heart is love's abode. For our Psalter reading this evening, we'll be hearing from Psalm 22, verses 1 through 11. But there's a sung response in our hymnal that is beautifully capturing the the emotion of this text so evan will open our psalm reading with this sung response and then close it with the same response you're welcome to join in with him or just to listen My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me, 
from the words of my groaning. O oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but find no rest. Yet you are holy, enthroned on the praises of Israel. In you our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and not human, scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me. They shake their heads. Commit your cause to the Lord. Let him deliver. Let him rescue the one in whom he delights. Yet it was you who took me from the womb. You kept me safe on my mother's breast. On you I was cast from my birth. And since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Our story continues where we left off last night in Luke chapter 22, verses 63 through 71. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people both chief priests and scribes gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the son of man will be seated at the right hand of the power of God. All of them asked, are you then the son of God? He said to them, you say that I am. They then said, what further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Our story continues in Luke, chapter 23, verses 1 through 12. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, you say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, he stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he began, even to this place. 
When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by, vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Many put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies. Stay with me, remain here with me, watch and pray, watch and Our story continues in Luke, chapter 23, verses 13 through 25. Pilate then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted out together, away with this fellow, release Barabbas for us. This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but he kept shouting, crucify, crucify him. A third time, he said to them, why, what evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified. And their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder. And he handed Jesus over as they wished. Hear this poem entitled Prayer for Overcoming Indifference. For the sin of silence, for the sin of indifference, for the secret complicity of the neutral, for the washing of hands, for the crime of indifference, for the sin of silence, for all that was done, for all that was not done, let there be no forgetfulness before the throne of glory. Let there be remembrance within the human heart, and let there at last be forgiveness. When your children, O oh God, are free and at peace. Stay with me, remain here with me, watch and pray, watch and
Our story continues in Luke chapter 23, verses 26, and then 30 through, through 43. As they led him away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leaders scoffed at him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself. If he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him, This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise.
Our story continues in Luke chapter 23, verses 44 through 49. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon while the sun's light failed and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus crying with a loud voice said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. And when all the crowds who had gathered there for the spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance watching these things. Stay with me, remain here with me, watch and pray, watch and To Christ crucified. I am not moved, my God, to love you by the heaven and earth you have promised me, nor am I moved by the dread of hell to cease out of fear from offending you. You move me, my God. It moves me to see you nailed to that cross and mocked. It moves me to see your tortured body. It moves me to see the anguish of your death. In some, your love moves me in such a way that even if there were no heaven, I would love you. And even if there were no hell, I would fear you. You do not have to give me a reason to love you because even if I were not hoping for all I hope for, I would love you the same as I love you now.